to From the She Shed France. For those of you who've been to my channel before, you'll see that I'm not actually in the she shed today, I'm in the kitchen. I did say that from time to time I would be doing some cookery. And one of the reasons for that is that cooking is really good for mindfulness and flourishing. So that's one of the reasons I'm here today. Also, because I think I mentioned on a previous video that I've been given some free, free apples and windfalls. Um, and so I wanted to use their mark. And then last night my husband came in with some blackberries, not quite this number. Um, so I thought, right, let's make some blackberry and apple jam. There wasn't actually enough uh, um, blackberries for the recipe. So this morning we went out and we gathered some more. I will put all the details of the recipe in the details box below. I have to be honest and say I am someone who's a bit of a bung-ho when it comes to cooking so whatever's around tends to go in but when it comes to preserves you have to be a bit more accurate particularly because you want things to set. So what you'll see is that I've got apples, blackberries, sugar, lemons, um, and some of these are some of the tools that I'm going to be needing, my saucepan, wooden spoon, uh, funnel and uh, label and later on obviously sterilised jars to put everything away. As a rule of thumb what you'll find is that if you have two kilos of fruit you will need two kilos of sugar. I don't like using pectin, I, I'm not very keen on it, I'm not keen on artificial things, which is why I've got lemons, because lemons have got a very high level of pectin in them, so they actually help you to set your fruit naturally. So, with no more further ado, I'm going to make a start. Okay, well I'm about to start cooking. Now what I've got here is I've got a kilo of blackberries and a kilo of cored, peeled and diced apples. I've zested my lemons and I've squeezed them a little but I'm going to leave them in. I usually do that when I'm cooking jam, I leave them in the mixture. Now a lot of recipes will ask you to put some water in at this point. I don't usually and the reason for that is that if you have picked blackberries what you will find is as you can see, they are already giving off, off a lot of juice. And given that you want this product to set a little later on, it's better if you don't introduce more liquid than is absolutely necessary. So at this stage, what I'm going to do is put it onto a burner, um, set it on a fairly low heat, um, and so that the blackberries continue to give off a bit of liquid. And once they've given off a bit more liquid, then I'll actually start to allow it to boil. And I'm going to let that boil probably for about 10 minutes, 15 minutes, until the apples start to soften. And whilst that's happening, I should be putting some sauces in the freezer. When it comes to testing uh, whether or not jam is set, the best way to do it is on, on sauces that have been made really, really cold. And the easiest way to do that, I find, is to put them in the freezer. What I'm hoping you can see now is that the blackberries have started to really let their liquid go. And so there's quite a lot of liquid in the bottom of my pan. So at this stage, I'm going to turn the heat up a bit because then the apples will start to boil. I don't like to let things start trying to boil until we've got a reasonable amount of liquid. But now we've got that level of liquid, I can turn the heat up a bit and that's what I'm going to start doing. Okay. 
Okay, my jam is boiling still and I'm not quite ready to put the sugar in. Um, you can probably hear it's boiling beside me. What I am going to do in the meantime though is to sterilise my jars. I've washed them all and they're all wet and it is important that they remain wet because what you don't want is any glass cracking and if you put the glass into an oven when it's wet it's fine. Wash the lids as well um, and again you can see there's still a bit of water here. The oven is on 100 degrees Celsius. In reality, you only need five, 10 minutes to sterilize your jars, but what I try to do is do them at some point during the process so that they're there. They won't, it won't harm them being there longer. Um, they can remain there and they stay there until you're ready to fill them. So now I'm just gonna put, pop them into the oven. And as I say, this is the simplest way to uh, sterilise jars. Okay, this has been boiling now for about 10-15 minutes and is quite liquid and the fruit is starting to soften. So this is the moment where I'm going to start adding my sugar. Now do be careful when you're adding sugar because it actually gets incredibly hot it can spit back at you so I'd like to try and sort of pour it in steadily what we're wanting it to do is to dissolve now it will seem as though it's dissolving instantly it won't be quite but it will be well on its way as it goes in now if you remember at the outset I said I had a kilo of blackberries and a kilo of um, apples and so therefore two kilos of fruit therefore two kilos of sugar and that's the first kilo in and it's already going quite liquid which is good because we need it to dissolve the other thing is worth noting is that when I cook chutney which I will do at some point I tend to use brown sugar but when I'm making jams I tend to use white sugar. I just think that when you're making a fruit paste preserve, you need something that's a little bit more refined. Uh, not for marmalade, but certainly for jams. So there we go, two kilos of sugar now in. Now what's gonna happen now is I'm gonna stir it, not continuously, but on and off for about the next 15 minutes. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring it up to what's known as a rolling boil and I'll show you that in a little while and that's the stage at which the jam will start to set. So um, now it's letting it uh, boil for the next 10-15 minutes. So my jam has been boiling gently for a little while now and my sugar is thoroughly dissolved. That's one of the important things about making jam is that you must make sure your sugar is completely uh, dissolved. So now what I'm going to do is bring it up to what's known as the rolling boil. And as soon as it starts to hard boil or rolling boil, I'll be timing it for 10 minutes. So you can already see it's starting to bubble a bit more one of the joys of um, an induction hob it works very quickly so if I just stand here for a minute or two hopefully we're going to see it start to really boil hard and then I will start to time it so it is bubbling honest you might not see it but it is there we go starting to well, you can start to see as it blips you can see little air bu bubbles and you'll get more and more of those when it starts to do a real rolling boil um, and here we go we're not there yet but when we're getting much closer all the time as you can see it's really starting to bubble all across the pan now and as it goes we will start in a moment I'll wait until it really is really bubbling away before I start timing it. And you can see that um, much of the pan is bubbling but that's not not yet what I would call a rolling boil. We are very close but not quite there. 
as you can see as it starts to really get going the fruit moves things are moving and that's one of the reasons why it's known as a rolling boil because things are actually turning over at this point and you can really see a difference in how it's moving so we're nearly there let's give it a quick stir just to get things moving around and then in a moment or two I will actually start timing it yeah I'm happy now to call that a rolling boil and I'm going to start timing so in 10 minutes, I will come back and actually do the first bit of testing to see whether or not my jam has set. Okay, it's coming up on 10 minutes of broiling, rolling boil now. What I will say to you is that the saucepan I've used is probably a bit small and I would advocate as the bigger the pan as possible because that way you don't get as much splash as I've had during this time. The um, saucer that I put in the um, freezer earlier I've just pulled out in order to test my jam and I have also sterilised my equipment, so my ladle, my uh, funnel and also a couple of teaspoons. So let's have a look, just a few seconds more and then I'll take it off um, in order to test and then if it's not actually set at this stage what I'll need to do is to put it back on and boil it for another five minutes. You do it five minutes at a time. So um, you start with 10 um, and if it isn't fully set after 10, you, you roll and boil for another five each time. And uh, I'm hoping that this might have been enough to actually set my jam. So there we go. I'm going to pull it off the heat now. Now, I'm just going to leave it to one side for a moment. You can see it's made quite a bit of mess here. So I'm just going to clean it up a bit. Um, I'm not going to stick my spoon in whilst it's absolutely boiling because um, I'm going to get splashed with hot sugar and that's never a very good idea. So let's get my spoon. Let's get a little bit of the jam. What you do is you put it on the plate. And what I'm looking for is you give it a minute or two and then what we're looking for is for it to form a skin if I actually push it around. So let's see what it's doing. And I would say that whilst it's not uh, cool enough probably yet, you can start to see that that actually is quite thick and is holding its shape as I push it about. So I think I'm happy to call that. Well, it's not actually a skin on it as such. Let me give it just a moment or so and let's see whether or not it does have more of a skin. But I think I'm fairly happy with this and that actually it, is, it has thickened up See, it's, it's not liquid, it is actually quite thick to the touch. Although there isn't a skin there. I'll tell you what, I am going to give it another five minutes. Okay, so it's had another nearly five minutes now and I can smell a change now so I'm going to take it off the heat you can see I've got another um, saucer out that's been in the freezer um, you need to put them in the freezer to make them really cold it's the way in which it works best to testing um, so now what I'm going to try and do this time is take no fruit and just liquid because last time I had a bit of fruit in there um, but I think 
having seen how much it's um, actually thickened after we left it for a few minutes, I think I'm quite happy with it now. Now, it is, let's give it a moment or two to cool on the plate. The plate actually helps it to fast cool because of course it's been in the freezer. Um, and that will actually help with us deciding whether or not it is thick, and it is. You can see now, that as I pull it backwards, you get some residual um, in the jam itself. So whilst it hasn't got a thick skin on it, if I left it for a few more minutes, it would have. So I'm quite happy with that now. And so I am going to declare that this is cooked and I'm going to move on to the next stage. Okay, so I've cooked the jam. So the next thing now is to start the process of jarring up. As you'll remember, I put my jars in the oven to be sterilised so they are now extremely hot so I would say to you be very careful at this stage you definitely need a thick a thick cloth or oven gloves um, and a steady hand I would say I'll show you the start of jarring up but I'm not going to do the whole of this on camera because it is a tricky process but I put boiling water in this bowl with a little bit of salt to keep things sterilized nice and clean and obviously my ladle as well. So I'm going to start with one of my nice wide neck jars. I'm going to push the lemon out of my way so that it's not actually in the way whilst I'm jarring up because I don't want that in my jars of jam. So I am going to get on now and finish jarring it all up and I'll come back to you when I've finished. So we have finished bottling up now and as you can see I've managed to get eight jars of jam so I'm quite pleased with that. There is a bit extra, there's always some extra but my husband will have eaten that before when the next two days are out so um, that's not a problem the fact that I haven't got a lid for that jar I'll pop it in the fridge. I hope you've really enjoyed this video. One of the things about it is about thinking about getting things from nature, spending some time outside because you saw earlier on we actually went out and foraged for the blackberries which is quite good fun um, and so there's a sense of achievement having made these isn't there, the apples were free, the blackberries were free and it was just my time and some sugar really. I hope you have enjoyed this video and if you have please do subscribe to From the She Shed click the button and also ring the bell so that you know when I next upload. For now, thank you for watching. Until the next time.